Welcome to In The Gym. I'm your host, Michael Petrella. Today we have a great guest, Eric McKay from Fowlerville, Michigan. He is the owner and head trainer at No Bull Strength and Performance. Eric, thank you for being on the show. Thanks for having me. We just want to get started with, what is your background as a trainer? How did you get started in the industry? Uh, I started training, lifting weights when I was about 11 or 12 years old. Um, and then in, I hit eighth grade and we had a uh, strength, clean, strength training class in eighth grade. Uh, our PE teacher was big into strength training, introduced us to people like Arthur Jones, Mike Gittleson, Ken Manny, some of these legendary strength coaches and inventors of, of equipment and stuff. So <clears throat> uh, just always loved to lift weights and, and learning more about it really piqued my interest. So been lifting for a long time, decided to go to school, get a degree and... Where'd you go to school and what's your degree? Uh, actually, I wanted to be a teacher and kind of do the same thing as my teacher and inspired me in strength training. So I went to Central Michigan University and got my bachelor's degree in uh, physical education and uh, school health and then finished with my master's in physical education pedagogy, how to, how to teach physical education. So how did that transition into you starting Noble, which is just a fantastic facility. I've visited you a couple times and um, you have some of the best equipment anywhere. How did that become a business for you? I appreciate that. Um, as I was working on my master's degree, <laughs> I had a professor. Uh, he's like, you know, <clears throat> I don't see you as a high, uh, uh, you know, university type professor, like <laughs> person. I'm like, I don't know if that's a good or a bad I'm sure thing. That's a compliment or I not. don't know, but uh, he's like, no, you're just you're an in the field. You're a hands-on. You get it. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. I love that. I love the coaching, the teaching aspect of it. Um, so I was looking for a teaching position, phys ed, and couldn't really find one. So I had a bunch of equipment. I had some people say, hey, could you train me? I'm like, yeah, sure. How much would you charge? Uh, oh, I, I don't know. Let me think about that. So in many ways, the business started very organically. It's yeah. Just, that's what your passion was, that's what your education was, and people were asking for it, and you just kind of went into the field. Yeah, I just said, oh, okay, let's, let's start with this. How, how about you pay me this? Okay, that'll work. So. so for those who haven't been fortunate, like myself, to come visit, tell us a little bit about what is Noble. How have you equipped it? Um, how do you train people? Uh, no bull is uh, it's kind of a fun for all ages <laughs> uh, facility. Uh, started in the basement of my home, uh, 1,400 square foot, and I just started accumulating equipment, um, kind of based off my experiences, what I worked out on growing up. Some Nautilus equipment, hammer strength, um, was the main portion of it. As I got further into the field and experienced more equipment, uh, pendulum equipment came along. Um, I fell in love with the way that felt right away and started trying to accumulate that when I could. It was hard to find at the time. <clears throat> and, um, you know, just if, if it felt good, worked with the body, and it was something that someone I was, I was training kind of needed, I would go out and look for stuff as, as, you know, if they had this issue or that issue, I know I, this machine will help with that, so let me go find it. and. Just kept growing from there to the point that I had to build a barn yep. <laughs> and put a bigger facility together. And Perfect. So talking about buying specific equipment for somebody's needs, one of the main things that we're going to cover on this episode is strength training for the neck and the benefits of it. So tell us a little bit about how you got into strengthening there, how you got into neck training at your facility, maybe what your inspiration was, maybe even some of the, uh, the early machines that you were using at the time. Yeah, uh, so when I was in middle school and going into high school, um, our strength coach, PE teacher, uh, had a four-way neck machine. And so he would tell us that we needed to do it. You know, most people wouldn't do it, but I kind of enjoyed it. Um, you know, I saw some different things. My neck was getting a little bit bigger. And uh, I was not, wasn't always, you know, this, this big svelte guy here. <coughs> I was littler at one point in time. And uh, so it felt like my neck was getting bigger. Had a couple issues, concussions, playing sports, riding my bike and stuff. And uh, there were some times when they're like, oh, you know, if you wouldn't have been doing this neck training stuff, if your neck wouldn't have been as strong, they didn't know I was doing neck training. If your neck wouldn't have been as strong, you could have had this issue or that issue. 
So I'm like, there's something going on there. So I continued to train my neck. So I've actually been training my neck since I was like 12 years old. Well, that's awesome. And we're going to get into a little bit about the research later on in the episode. Um, where was the first time that you've seen in any sort of publication or research neck training, I'm not going to say available to the public, but where people were starting to talk about it? Uh, not until, was it early, mid-2000s, kind of the whole concussion epidemic, as they want to say, started or whatever. It's just, I think, the, the diagnosis was getting different. We were noticing things, and, and um, so it was probably the first time I really, really got into it um, and noticed. So I spent most of the 90s. I didn't go, start back to school until I was 26. Um, so I spent most of the 90s working other jobs and just training myself. So I wasn't reading a whole lot into the research or anything there. <clears throat> it wasn't until the mid-2000s into the later 2000s and now that I continue to see some of my friends on social media are like, oh yeah, he's kind of the neck guy. I just saw this research. So they'll send me research over, hey, have you seen this or have you read that? And so. Now at your place, I know you, you work with a lot of athletes, but you also work with a, a much broader demographic. Does everybody at Noble essentially train neck in some form, some fashion? Some, some form or fashion. We're doing some type of uh, range of motion or neck strength. Yeah, but we're working through range of motion um, and some type of head and neck training. That's fantastic. So when we come back from break, we're going to have Eric do some demonstration on how to properly train the neck. We're, we're fortunate enough to have one of the same tools that he has, so he's very proficient with it. But he's also going to show stuff that you don't need specific exercise equipment for. Eric McKay from No Bull Strength and Performance is going to show us a practical demonstration on how he would train the neck with some of his clients <coughs> using some very, very basic implements and then also working with some great four-way neck machines. Eric? Thank you. Um, so we would start out, uh, everyone, as they come in um, on a bench just to kind of do some movement and get the understanding of which muscles are working and kind of what I'm looking for before we throw them on a an actual machine and start putting weight on their cervical spine. So, <clears throat> Mike, if you could, uh, Mike, I'll call you Spike. If you could lay down here. <clears throat> so, as they lay down on the bench, I'd have head on the bench using the weight of their head. <clears throat> Once they slide off, gravity kicks in a little bit more and it's actually going to be a little bit harder. So, we would start off here, actual on the bench. Just to get an idea, so we'd start with some neck protrusion, just trying to bring their head straight up, keeping the, the face fairly flat, as high as they can. You should feel that, feeling that in the back of the neck, up and down. Once they get the idea here, then we'll go into a full neck flexion. So come on, protrude all the way up, chin down, driving in, focusing on the muscles in the front of the neck, making sure that they're feeling it in the right spot there. <clears throat> So to progress in this section with just the weight on, might do uh, count reps or actually do time and see how long they can last and try and progress forward from there. <clears throat> from here, we could slide up to make it a little bit harder. I'm gonna start with the same protrusion now. Way up, good, all the way down. I'm gonna see what that Gravity kicks in a little bit more there. Come all the way up. Flexion in. Back to neutral position or just above. I never really go full flex, full extension anymore. Um, <clears throat> back down. Good. Relax right on down. From protrusion flexion, we'd have him roll over and do extension. So he'd be on his belly, nose in the mat. <clears throat> I'll, some of my older clients or even real young clients, I'll start out with the head right on the mat here like this, and then we just extend up, trying to look at the back wall, working the back of the neck here. From here, once they get good, slide forward so the head's all the way off. 
<clears throat> you can slide forward a little bit more so that chin's right on off there. There we go. Okay, starting chin down in the neutral position, head up. If I want to make and change the way they feel, because the neck muscles run all the way down into the middle of the back, I'll have him take his arms off to the side and pinch up like he was doing a row. Top there, squeeze. There you go, chin down. Big squeeze between the shoulder blades. You feel that difference in there? Yeah. And down. <coughs> Once extension, slide down, flip over, and we can do some lateral, uh, even some rotation movement, just to kind of see their range of motion and get those muscles activated, working so they're, they're, they're used to what we're gonna do before we get over to the five-way neck machine. So go ahead and bring your head up. A little lateral flexion, take your right ear to your right shoulder. Get it back to neutral. Left ear, left shoulder. Try not to twist the head. Yeah, one more time over to the side. And it's just kind of seeing rotation. Turn, look to the right. Great pause, back to the left just to get an idea of what their range of motion is, where they may have some hang-ups, um, so that when we get onto a machine, put weight to it, I'm not overloading too much and working through something that they're not comfortable in. Eh, relax. So that's where we'd start out as on a bench. And so here we are over the neck machine. Once we've learned from the, the uh, bench how to get started, we're gonna come over to the neck machine. Um, and we'll start out with a neck flexion, adjust their seat height properly wherever they need, need it. Um, <clears throat> that's gonna change based on the individual. We'll go ahead and have a seat right in. Start out with flexion, like we started over here on the bench. Start with flexion, we're gonna have his head placed in there. There are handles in the front, but in the very beginning, I like to use a stick. Uh, so you're gonna grab the stick and hold up overhead. They're gonna give a little bit of pressure just to activate through the shoulders, but they don't want the shoulders to come up and get the traps and everything else involved. It's just about the neck. So we engage all the musculature around here. I can hold his shoulders back so he gets no trunk flexion as well. And it's all about the neck. And then he's just going to put pressure in and drive flexion down, chin to chest, and back up to that neutral position. Chin slightly above is fine. We don't need the whole range of motion. <clears throat> back down. So we'll use this in the very beginning, then I'll take the stick away after a while. They'll use the handles in front. <clears throat> if I see that their technique is getting sloppy, we can drop weight back down and kind of reset what they're doing and just constantly always trying to make sure that everything is done as, as good as possible and appropriate. <clears throat> Once they build back up, come back with the stick, do a reset, a retest, their flexion there. You can also use the stick for extension. And spike comes off. You need to adjust the seat down or are you good? <clears throat> so for extension, instead of going up overhead, <clears throat> as I mentioned over on the bench, when we kind of pull into that, pinch the shoulder blades and pull back into uh, a row contracted position, it's going to work the, the neck muscles all the way down through into the back of the neck. So then we'll go ahead and come all the way up, extend all the way. Eyes are key, get the eyes involved. Make sure you're looking at the ceiling. Back to neutral, slightly below. Good pull. Again, this will help so that if he starts to extend and do a lumbar extension, I can take care of that <clears throat> and pull him back up and coach through that. And there we go, there's there. <clears throat> And again, we'll use this in the beginning as a teaching tool, and then as they get going, um, to kind of reset and recheck where they're at and uh, make sure that everything is going well. You can also use this in a lateral form, side to side, so that I've got control and they're not dipping the body in. So that would be similar to neck flexion, arms up above, and test there. So, and those are some of the tools that we use at No Bull when we train the head and the neck.
We're back with Eric McKay from No Bull Strength and Performance. He just did a fantastic presentation on practical application for training the neck. Eric, I want to talk to you now about what is the latest research saying about training the neck? In the last few years, it seems to have exploded in our industry, which is the fitness industry, and how important it is. What's going on with it? Uh, they're starting to notice a lot more benefits out from, I mean, years ago it was all concussion prevention, concussion prevention, you know, you train the neck for that, which is important. <clears throat> but there's, there's more, so much more research just showing that a stronger neck is a stronger body. The stronger your neck can be, the stronger your body can be. Uh, improvements in VO2 max if you're an athlete or just a general pop, like weekend warrior type of person. Um, <clears throat> numerous benefits outside of it. And there's a lot of very big universities, especially in the States, that are now doing these research papers and these protocols. It's not just a couple of people anymore. It's some, it's some big names. No, yeah, the concussion epidemic kind of kicked everything off and, and people thought, you know, we, we, we got to start looking at this because um, we're, we're having people, <clears throat> we're having our athletes uh, die in, in some cases early, early on from, from different things that they were believe were related to the, the head and neck injuries, concussions. So yeah, there's, there's a ton of research people are doing, uh, trying to come up with ways to help slow the injuries, head and neck injuries. So I want to stay on the topic of athletes for a minute. Um, obviously we just talked a little bit about in injury prevention, which is so huge, but the actual athletic performance, what is the research, what is the research saying and how it's helping these athletes perform on the field or on the ice? Uh, it's, it's some really cool stuff. Like, uh, you know, there's a direct correlation between uh, neck strength and non-dominant retina control. And I think in athletics, there's kind of a hand-eye coordination and vision stuff that's kind of important in, well, in everything, but in athletics, you know, that hand-eye coordination stuff. So, and although it was more done on the non-dominant retina control, I figure if the non-dominant is getting stronger then the dominant is getting just not as strong. They're not seeing it, you know, but your vision is improving there as well. Right. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's, it's the hotbed of proprioception back here connects the brain to the body. So the stronger that is, the better the body is going to maneuver in space in, in understanding what's going on. If you're jumping, landing, twisting, turning, what is it, you know, the uh, dodgeball, duck, dive. <laughs> So ultimately, what you're saying is the nervous system, it runs through the cervical spine, it runs through the neck. So not only do we want to protect this, but we also want to have it as strong as possible for our athletes. Oh yeah, to enhance your body's capabilities, absolutely. So I want to shift gears just a little bit because some of the people that may be watching this aren't necessarily athletes, they might not be in that population. But just for the general population, I tell a lot of people at my facility, if they drive a car, I want them training their neck because if they were unfortunately in an accident we've actually had some clients who they, they were and it can be the difference between having a lot of soft tissue damage it takes a long time to recover or you know waking up maybe they have a stiff neck for a day or two but realistically it doesn't take away quality of life and also I see a lot of people talking about text neck constantly looking down protruding the neck talk about how strengthening the neck could just help your average population um, person yeah you know sitting at a desk hunched over, you know, strengthening the neck and the back so that they sit up. And when they're, when they're starting to do this, uh, it gets uncomfortable. And they want to pull their head back and sit up tall because they have been strengthened back into that position. Um, <clears throat> so, um, you know, to, to train the neck and the upper back to be able to feel that difference. Um, like you said, driving a car and to get back to kind of some of the latest research, athletic trainer, friends of mine and whatnot, through concussions and getting back, they're starting to notice that it's on an individual basis, but in some cases, we want you to get back maybe on the bench and just going through some range of motion. Promote that blood flow and the healing to go on because that soft tissue damage and the, and the muscles there, it's, it's in the neck. You might be feeling it in the brain, the effects in the brain, but, but the root cause is in the neck area and getting that strengthened back up. Absolutely. I want to revisit concussions just for a quick minute. We actually did a, a very small segment on training the neck back in 2012 for season one of In the Gym, and we just talked about some of the benefits. But at that time, it was, I'm not going to say fringe science, but it was still, they were even doing the research to, can having a stronger neck prevent 
concussions. And what is the research saying about now? Because I think it's become a little bit more conclusive since 2012. Uh, yeah, I, I want to make sure I get it right. Uh, I believe it's for every one pound of muscle gain in the neck, it lowers your, your chances of, uh, of a head and neck injury concussion by like 5%. Obviously, there's going to be, you know, if you gain so many pounds, you're not going to be 100% free and clear of getting a concussion. Accidents do happen, and that's why they're accidents. Um, the stronger the, the musculature of the head and neck is, the lower your chances. Um, it acts as that shock absorber. Instead of the brain bouncing around the skull, the shock is dissipated through the muscles of the neck. <clears throat> right. And down so, through the body. So what are your personal recommendations for training the neck? Say you have, uh, we'll say, um, an average in-shape person. There's no history of injury. How are they training the neck with you? We've seen the progression. Let's say that they're past the early stages and they're just training with you looking to get stronger. What does that kind of workout look like at No Bowl? Uh, they're going to do, if they come in twice a week, they're going to train train their uh, neck twice a week um, in some way, fashion, some way, shape, or fashion. So, you know, whether it be flexion and extension, lateral flexion, uh, and in there they would talk about head and neck. So there's head flexion, head extension as well, or the base of the, the skull and atlas axis. <clears throat> um, shrugs, so it's individually based. Um, where are they holding tension? Where are they noticing things? What are they seeing improvements on? And that feedback from them to kind of predict where they go in their workout. And that makes sense. It's always on an individual basis. Eric, I want to thank you for being on the show. If anyone would like to get in touch with Eric, what is the best way that they can do it? Uh, I'm all over social media. It's either Eric McKay or Noble Strength Performance, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Facebook. I have a Facebook business page as well. So <clears throat> whatever your means of, of communication is, I'm probably there as well. That's great. Eric, thank you very much for being on the show. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me.